Hi, um, in this video lecture, we're going to continue the topic for from where we left off for goal programming using the weighted approach. So uh, for this video, we will be talking about a different approach to solving goal programming models, and that one is the ranked goal model. Uh, the reason why we introduce the second approach is because although weighted goals approach is easy to use it does have its own drawbacks so um, it's it's a simple model and it can be easily applied but it suffers from two major drawbacks the first one is that it is appropriate to use only if all the goals and as a result, all the deviation variables are being measured in the same units. So for example, dollars over here, um, the example that we did for Wilson doors, all the four goals that we looked at um, were trying to achieve total sales numbers um, and sales numbers for different individual products sold by the company. So everything was in dollars. Uh, however, when we have different goals and they are used, uh, they're measured in different units, um, then the weighted goal approach cannot be used. So for example, um, the first goal could be about sales, which is measured in dollars. The second goal could be about steel usage, which is now measured in pounds. So in such cases, it is very difficult to assign appropriate weights because different deviation variables in the same objective function are being measured in different units. Um, the second drawback of the weighted approach is that even if all goals are measured in the same units, it's not always easy to assign suitable weights for the different deviation variables. So for example, in the Wilson's problem, um, how does management decide that the total sales goal is exactly five times as important as the three other goals? What if it's only three times more important? Clearly, this would affect the choice of the weights, which would in turn affect the um, optimal solution. So in order to deal with these two drawbacks that you see for um, weighted approach, we're going to introduce a new approach to solving a goal programming model, and that is using a ranked method. In the ranked goals approach to solving GP models, we assign ranks or priorities rather than weights to goals. The idea is that goals can be ranked based on their importance to management. Lower ranked goals are considered only after higher ranked goals are met. Note that this is possible to assign the same rank for two or more goals. So for example, you see on the screen right now uh, an example again for Wilson doors, but this time we have five goals set for them. Um, and if I want, I can keep goal number two and goal number three as my top rank goals and then solve goal number one as the second ranked goal, goal number four as the third rank goal, and so on. So the the different ways you can um, assign the ranks to the goals um, is possible. So the previous example that we did for the weighted approach, um, the management had set four goals for us to, to try to achieve. And they're the same that you see goal one through four right now. Now, because in the ranked goals approach, we are no longer restricted to measuring all goals in the same unit, uh, let's expand Wilson's problem by adding one additional goal to it. Suppose Wilson plans to switch to a different type of steel for the next production period. Management would therefore like to ensure that the production period, this period, sorry, the production plan this period, um, uses up as much of the current available steel. So right now you have 9,000 pounds of steel available. So management sets a goal to achieve the steel usage of as close to 9,000 pounds as possible. So we can handle this using the ranked goals approach because the ranked goal approach um, can be used when your goals are being measured in different units. 
So let's say that Wilson's management has examined the five goals that you just saw and has decided to rank them in decreasing order of rank as follows. The top priority goal is goal number one, which has been given a rank of one. The second most important goal is goal number five, which has been given a rank of two. And then finally, goal two, three, and four are equally important, so they have all three been given a rank of three. What this means is that meeting the total sales goal is much more important than meeting the steel usage goal, which in turn is much more important than meeting the sales goal for each of the three types of doors. If we wish, we can further distinguish between goals within the same rank by giving these weights. Um, for example, we can assign appropriate weights to any of the three goals here in rank number three, but for now, we're just going to solve it as equal weights in rank 3. In addition to the eight deviation variables that we introduced in the previous video, um, we will define a ninth deviation variable for our fifth goal, which has just been added to the example. The fifth goal, if you recall, is to use as much of steel as possible. So in that case, Overachieving that goal is not possible because you only have 9,000 pounds of steel available. So overachieving would mean using more than 9,000 pounds of steel, uh, which is not possible because you don't have more than 9,000. So you only have one deviation variable associated with goal number five, which is the D negative S, uh, which measures the underachievement of the steel usage goal. So now formulating our goal programming problem as a ranked method is to set our objective function. The objective function is still the same. We still want to minimize the sum of our underachievement deviations, but now we have ranked those deviations. So we've assigned rank one to D negative T because that's the deviation variable associated with goal number one that is ranked as one plus the deviation for variable for um, the steel usage goal which is assigned rank two and then finally uh, the goals two three and four have been assigned rank three so they're going to be solved as rank three subject to the constraints which define the deviation variables as a part of the goals. Notice that we've added one additional constraint here, which is for the fifth goal for steel usage. Um, the steel usage constraint gives us 4E plus 3I plus 7C. This was the left-hand side of the steel usage constraint. And we added the deviation variable to it and set it equal to 9,000. Initially, this was a less than or equal to constraint, but because we have added the deviation variable to it, we can get rid of the less than or equal sign and replace it with the equal sign. So now we have five definition constraints for each of the five goals, and we have two of the regular LP constraints that we had for forming time and assembly time. Notice that we do not have to add the steel usage constraint anymore because it has been converted from a constraint to a goal instead. To find the optimal solution for a GP model with ranked goals, we need to set up and solve a series of LP models. Um, so this will be done over multiple Excel sheets. So just like a regular LP model, you solve it in one single Excel sheet. Here, you will have the number of Excel sheets will be equal to the number of ranks that you have. So because we have three ranks set for this particular example, we're going to have three Excel sheets to solve the goal programming problem that we have at hand. In the first of the LP model, this is where you consider these first two bullet points, uh, we consider only the highest ranked goal and ignore all the other goals. So all the other goals which fall in rank two or three are ignored and we only try to minimize the rank one deviation, which is D negative T. 
Once you get a solution for that, you're going to use that solution and solve the second LP model where you minimize only the rank two deviation goal. So for that, it's uh, the usage of steel. So you only try to minimize D negative S and add the previous model solution as an additional constraint to it. Then finally, for the third rank goals, we solve a third LP model where we minimize only the rank three deviations, this time's goal two, three, and four, and add the previous two solutions to this new third model as uh, constraints. Let's take a look at how we can do this in Excel. So we will first start off with only solving rank one goals. And since in rank one, uh, DT negative was the only deviation variable involved, I will put a one under the column where I've labeled DT negative. All the other deviation variables are ignored, which is why our objective function is only going to consider DT negative. Um, notice that I'm using the same template that I had set up in the earlier example for weighted approach. The only difference now is that instead of having weights, I just have a row called objective coefficient, which is going to help me set the deviation variable that I am solving for that particular rank. So for now, we're ignoring all the other deviation variables, which is why you see the objective coefficient of these as zero or as blank. And we only have DT negative having an objective coefficient of one. The rest of the problem remains the same, except for now, the steel usage, goal, uh, the steel usage requirement has converted from a constraint to a goal. So you see it in the equal constraints for the definition of the goals. So everything else is the same as we had in the weighted approach, except for the fact that we're only focusing on rank one for this particular Excel sheet. So I'm going to move to solver now. And in the solver window, again, everything remains the same. I'm going to minimize the objective function, which is in cell N6, subject to the changing variables, which are my yellow cells here, and um, the two constraints, sets of constraints, the one for the goal definitions and one for the regular resource usage. So when I press solve here, solver has found a solution for me, and the solution is telling me to produce 1,000 exterior doors, 800 interior doors, and 200 commercial doors. Um, and looks like I've achieved goal number one because of this solution. Next, I'm going to move on to rank two goals. Here, I've expanded my screen so that you can see the headings for my different worksheets. The wor first worksheet that we were just working on is labeled R1 because this is the worksheet for the rank one goals. Similarly, I've created another worksheet for R2. This is for the second rank goals. And finally, for R3, which would be the third ranked goals. So if you have more ranks in your model, you will have the same number of Excel sheets in your solution. L so now let's move on now that we have a solution for the rank one goals which is dt negative has to be equal to zero uh, we move on to rank two goals for rank two goals i'm using a copy of the same worksheet that i used for rank one goals and i made a change to it by identifying the deviation variable that i'm solving for in this particular rank previously i was solving for dt negative which is why I had a one underneath that. But because I've already solved for that now, I'm going to only put a coefficient for the steel usage goal, which is my rank two goal. So that's why there's a one underneath that and everything else is blank in this objective coefficients row. The same way you are going to go to solver. And now everything else remains the same 
your objective function is still n6, you're still minimizing it, changing variables are the same, except that now you're going to force an additional constraint saying that dt negative, which is the cell value in E5, has to be set to zero. This is the solution we got from solving the rank one goals. So this time around, our constraints have the two original set of constraints, the goal definition constraints, the resource availability constraints, and a third constraint, which was the solution from the previous ranks uh, Excel file. So click solve here. And solver gave us a solution for this one where the optimal value for ds negative is zero which means that we have achieved our second goal of the steel usage we are using exactly the 9000 that we were supposed to use so so far we have achieved both of our top two goals achieving uh, sales of at least 180,000 we've overachieved that and we've used 9,000 in steel usage now it's the time to move to our rank 3 goals so I'm going to switch to the third worksheet that I've created here for rank 3 we had the goals 2 3 and 4 ranked as the third rank in our goals priority list so now again i'm using a copy of the same worksheet that i had used for rank one and rank two except that i'm changing this objective coefficient uh, for each rank depending on what goals are involved in there so in the first rank i had a one under dt negative in the second rank, I had a 1 under ds negative. Now, because I'm solving for goal 2, 3, and 4 at the same time, I have added a 1 under de negative, di negative, and dc negative. Everything else remains the same. And in my solver window, in addition to the two, two actual constraints that I had earlier, I'm keeping the constraint from rank 2 which was to set dt negative to 0 and using the solution from rank 2 to set ds negative which is in cell g5 to 0 and click solve so now we have solved for all five of our goals and if you look at this achieved column looks like we've solved for goal 1 we've achieved that We've achieved goal two. We have achieved goal three as well because we're making uh, more than the 70,000 target. We, however, could not achieve goal three and four because these two are under the target that was specified for them. So this way, now that we have satisfied uh, our different goals, we're able to address multiple goals in the same model but um, at the same time we're not optimizing instead we're trying to do our best that we can given the constraints for the model